Today's video sponsor is GVG where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I should Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So as for today's video, we have a video about power tuning. And I'm not talking about the cars. Yet. Oh my Jesus. Now seriously, we have a video about power tuning on the RX 7900 XTX, which was a video that some people were already asking when they actually saw my unboxing that I released some hours ago. But I was actually doing the video of the power tuning before uh, I made the unboxing. Well, I unboxed the card first, but I edited after. If you're getting what I mean. But well, as for this video, this isn't gonna be a super deep dive in, uh, but it will certainly, it will certainly, sorry, bring some interesting results. I will test several games. Um, firstly, with several overclocking and undervolting profiles at several at several frequencies, like minimum and maximum of 2300, 2400, then 2500, 2600, and then 2600, 2700. Okay, with several uh, voltages and so on, and then stock plus stock power limit plus 15%, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. And well, if you're new to RDNA 3 GPUs, I must tell you that they work, well, they work close to the same way as the RDNA 2 GPUs, which are basically the RX 6000 series, but at the same, at least for now with these drivers, at the same time, they are actually pretty different because these cards work like the Zen 4 GPUs. So the Ryzen 7000 CPUs work uh, with a maximum temperature limit, okay? And up to that temperature, they will increase the clocks as much as they can, okay? In this case, the temperature is, to, is 95 degrees, and up to 95 degrees, they will increase their clocks the maximum they can to ensure the maximum performance. And these cards, the RDNA 3, they do more or like the same. They kind of have a power limit, in this case, the, the stock one is 350 watts, and inside those same 350 watts, the card will increase the clock frequencies the max it can inside those same 350 watts. If you allow a power limit of plus 15% up to 400 watts, the card will raise the and will boost to the maximum clocks possible on those same 400 watts. And this is how the RDNA 3 cards work, okay? At least so far the ones that we know, in this case the 7900XT and the 7900XTX, which is the one being tested here. And that's why these cards are usually better at lower resolutions. Why? Because lower resolutions actually don't need that much power and if the card has power available to use it will use it in order to boost the clock speeds and that's why they are usually faster uh, at lower freak uh, at lower resolution sorry because as soon as you increase the, the resolution and you increase the load on the GPU the frequencies have to drop okay that's how it works and with this all being said uh, and minimally explained Let's go to the results to see what we can actually get from undervolting and overclocking. Brother! The first game I tested for this was God of War starting at 1440p and we already have some very interesting results. By the way, the average FPS are presented in grey, the stock settings power draw in red and the tweaked settings power draw in black. The stock settings are pushing 163 average FPS while reaching the max stock power limit of 350 watts. While increasing the power limit to 400 watts, we do get an FPS boost of up to 168. Now, this is where things start getting interesting. As soon as I apply my tweaked settings with 2300 2400 MHz at 11 20 mV, we get more FPS than stock settings while having 24 watts less power draw. And the same happens with the other two settings where we get a bit less power draw than at stock with increased power limit while having up to 10 average FPS more. Raising the resolution to 1440p ultra-wide, things follow the same pattern with lower frequency tweak timings, delivering higher average FPS than stock with less power draw, and the 2500-2600 MHz settings delivering more performance than stock settings with power limit plus 15, while also consuming 20 watts less, which is nice. 
Now with Plague Tale Requiem, an extremely heavy title that pushes this card's power draw to the max. But still we have around the same results at 1440p with a 2300-2400 MHz settings, delivering a bit higher results than stock while consuming around 20 watts less, and the 2500-2600 MHz also delivering a bit more FPS and less power draw than the stock settings with plus 15% power limit. And the higher frequency settings, well, just were a no-go as the card would completely crash on this title. Going to 1440p ultra wide, the 2600 slash 2700 MHz settings still crashed, but that doesn't mean that we didn't have something. Stock, we had the usual 350 watts power draw, while with the 2300 slash 2400 MHz settings, we had once again more FPS, but now with a bit more power draw, since the GPU can't maintain such high clocks in games like this. And raising the clocks to 2500 slash 2600, we had an increase of 40 watts power draw that only delivered slightly 1% lows, but with exactly the same results on average. As for Modern Warfare 2, I only tested that 1440p ultrawide, but don't worry because more interesting results are coming next. Now, this is even more interesting because this game usually demands lower power from the GPU, meaning that stock locks can boost higher, which will lead to higher FPS. At stock we finally have a bit more FPS with the stock settings compared to the 2300-2400 MHz ones, but on the previous we're having 35 watts less power draw for only 2 average FPS less. Something that would never be noticed in real gameplay. But the best results here, in my opinion, are the 2500-2600 MHz ones that deliver higher performance than both stock options, this while being around the 355 watts mark, which is pretty acceptable for a top-tier GPU. And even the 2600-2700 MHz settings were pushing a bit more FPS without reaching the 400 watts power limit. Which was quite cool to see. Now going to Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, which is a full ray tracing game, also being tested at 1440p ultra wide and maximum settings. By the way, take notice that the performance of these GPUs will improve with time and I can clearly see from their behavior that their potential in most games is far from being reached. Anyway, here this case is a bit different, with a minimum 2300-2400 MHz settings actually consuming 5 watts more than the stock settings, but at the same time delivering 3 FPS more, which in this case is around 4%. But the better option here in this game, performance-wise, is the 2500-2600 MHz settings that consume 50 watts over the stock settings, but deliver a 9% performance increase. Also, you might be asking yourself why did the higher frequencies had lower results? Well, that was because they were already hitting the power limits with less frequency and pushing more frequency under the same power limit usually leads to lower performance. At least, with these RDNA 3 cards, something that was slightly different in the previous RDNA 2 ones. Now with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, this is one of those games where the power draw is unusually low with all cards, and if the power draw is lower than usual, that leaves more power room for these cards to boost at stock settings, meaning that the stock FPS will be higher. Although that doesn't mean that we can't get better performance results from tweaking, as going with 2500-2600 MHz settings gets us roughly the same performance as stock settings, with plus 15% power limit, but consuming 100 watts less, which is insane. And if you don't mind losing a bit of performance, you can still achieve around 130 average FPS while lowering the power draw to 275 watts, which is much better than both stock settings. At 1080p things get even more interesting, as you can see the power draw with the tweaked settings is massively lower. But the same applies to the performance. Like I told you before in the intro, these cards boost clocks work mostly with power limits, and they'll boost to the maximum they can inside that same power limit. And the reason you're seeing both stock settings here reaching only a max of 340 watts is because the GPU was already hitting 3 GHz clock speeds, and that is why both stock and stock with increased power limit deliver the same results. Although, if you do not care about having 4 average FPS less, which in this situation is only 2%, you can decrease the power draw by 85 watts. So in this case, we have a trade of 2% performance for almost 35% less power draw. 
which seems a pretty sweet deal to me. Not even mentioning the lower noise outputs and of course the lower temperatures that come from this. And well, I was kind of dumb and actually forgot to record this part, so I'm recording it now. But since we now have the overclocking and undervolting re results, what about actually the locked FPS results? When you have, for example, a FreeSync monitor and you actually lock your, frame, your, your frames to that same number or to a number below in order to be inside the FreeSync range and have smooth gameplay. What happens then in terms of power draw? What configuration will draw the less power at the same FPS numbers? Let's watch. Now, in terms of locked FPS, God of War with locked FPS to 100 is also delivering some nice results, and I think that this is where the boost algorithm needs to improve, a lot, because it keeps trying to raise the clocks till they reach the maximum power limit, even in situations where higher clocks aren't needed, at all. At 1440p, using the 2300-2400 MHz settings, we can get 55 watts less while having the exactly the same 100 frames per second. At 1440p ultrawide, the scenario is even more extreme with the 2300-2400 MHz settings delivering 70 watts less than the stock settings while performing at the same 100 FPS, which once again is just insane. And even Metro Exodus is no exception, well, at least at 1440p, where our tweaked settings can decrease the power draw by up to 65 watts versus the stock settings, decrease heat, output, noise and delivering exactly the same performance. At 1440p Ultra Wide though, things change a bit, since the GPU needs to work more to deliver those same 75 FPS, sorry. But still, our tweaked settings have an advantage over the stock ones. And somehow, even with the same power draw, the tweaked settings deliver less coil wine. Most likely due to the lower voltages, I guess. The last test I did was with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 locked at 144 FPS, since people using FreeSync or G-Sync monitors will most likely lock the FPS a bit below their refresh rate in order to enjoy that smoothness. And if you lock yours to, let's say, 144 FPS like you see here, with a 1440p ultrawide resolution, this is how much you can decrease the power draw. We're talking about 70 watts difference between stock and the 2300-2400 MHz settings, which is a massive power reduction while delivering the same performance. Overall, great results can be achieved with these cards even with early drivers. This, of course, if you have the time or patience to do it. If you don't care about power draw well, the out-of-the-box performance is great for most titles. Now guys, as for the conclusion, as you've seen, things are pretty interesting. And although although things may be actually pretty interesting due to the to the boost algorithms that aren't really working properly or they aren't really working as they should. And one of the reasons that we can see that because I really I really saw several and several times that as soon as you use for example stock settings, even if you lock the FPS, the the GPU will still try to, um, to push the maximum clocks available and reach the same power limit that it has. Doesn't matter the, res the resolution, okay? And that's a thing that is completely nonsense when you lock the FPS. If you have locked FPS numbers, the card should be using less power and should be using less frequency. But that is a thing that does not happen with these GPUs because they will still push much more voltage, much more frequency, and will consume much more power than they need to to achieve those same FPS numbers. And that's why overclocking and undervolting mostly to the lower values like 2300 and 2400 MHz makes a huge difference in terms of power draw, even more when we're talking about locked FPS numbers. That's one of the things that you should look into if you have one of these cards, being, being it the XT or the XTX, if you're actually going that way and you want to play with locked FPS, then you should consider um, actually undervolting and reducing the frequency to 2300, 2400 MHz, okay? A tutorial will come later uh, where I explain how things work in more detail, uh, but for now, that's it. I've seen across the internet several things and several um, things tested like idle power draw, uh, video playback power draw and things like that and what I can tell you right away is that the idle power draw is usually around 16 watts with this card 
if I have things opened like, for example, YouTube, uh, Facebook, not with video playback, just being there, it usually goes to 30 ish watts, 35, 36, which is already quite high and shouldn't be happening. And if we go to video playback, it definitely has a bug and consumes 80 watts while doing video playback. So a card as monstrous in terms of performance as this one, so it it can do video playback while sleeping, literally, and it is consuming 80 watts while doing it, which is insane. And the same applies to lower load situations uh, and lower load gaming like League of Legends. When I'm playing League of Legends locked at 157 FPS, since my monitor is 160 Hz, I can see that the card is consuming around 120 watts, and for a game like this, it shouldn't be even even half of that, so it should be like 40 or maybe 60 watts for a game like that, not 130, okay? And that's, once again, due to the boost algorithms that need to improve. If you look at the voltage applied when doing video playback, it is way higher than it should be. For example, with my settings, the voltage applied will be around uh, the 700, 800 millivolts when gaming. Yes, when gaming. And when doing video playback, it goes to 650 millivolts, which is too much for what it's doing. And that's why maybe the power draw is so high. Because the VRAM clocks are pretty, are pretty okay, the VRAM clocks are low, but the core voltage gets way higher than it should be. And that's why I believe the power draw also increases way more than it should. Overall, I do believe that these things will get fixed. And well, that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. Leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the, the results. Let me know your experiences. If you have a, an RX 7900 XT or the 7900 XTX, let me know what's your experience, your temperatures, your performance, if everything is going well or not. Because I and the community surely want to know. See you in the next one.